Hello my friend and welcome back to Survival Superhero. AGM's G2 Guardian is the first rugged phone with a long range thermal monocular camera. But can it really see 500 to 1000 meters away? Watch this video to find out. And I am also going to show you two things that you do not want to do with this phone that could actually completely destroy it. And as always, I will leave a link to this phone in the description below if you want to learn more information or if you want to purchase one. Now, let's get straight into this video. First, let's unbox this phone. Huge thank you to AGM for sending me this phone to review. So we've got an 18 watt fast charger, extra rubber covers for the USB and the SIM, quick start guide, cleaning cloth, and a screen protector. Now, remember this screen protector because it is going to come up later in this video. And it's also got what appears to be a screen protector pre-installed on the screen. Let's talk about the specs. It's got a very nice Qualcomm QCM6490 chipset, comes with 8 or 12 gigabytes of RAM, 256 gigabytes storage, expandable up to 512 gigabytes. It's got a 6.58 inch FHD plus 120 hertz display, a 7,000 milliampere hour battery. It's got a 108 megapixel main rear camera plus 20 megapixel infrared night vision, 2 megapixel macro, and of course the long range thermal monocular camera with the 10 millimeter lens. It's also got a 109 decibel loudspeaker on the back. AGM says that it is certified IP68 and IP69K waterproof and dustproof, but note that you do have to have the USB and SIM rubber covers closed to keep it dust and waterproof. It can enter salt water or seawater, but also make sure that you rinse it off with fresh water after it's been in salt water. And AGM says that it is rated military standard 810H for drop proofing, but I do have some doubts about that after my drop test, which you will see later in this video. It measures 177.5 millimeters tall by 85.3 millimeters wide by 25.3 millimeters thick, and it weighs 405 grams. It features 10 watt wireless charging, and it's also got a flashlight torch on the top. It does have a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack on the bottom, but it does not include a hole in the bottom to tether it to something like some other rugged phones do. The thermal camera itself is surrounded by a higher outer ridge, so when you set the phone down, it rests on this outer ridge instead of the thermal camera lens. So you can set the phone down on its back without worrying about scratching up the thermal lens. Operating system. The Android 12 operating system is totally bloat free. The only apps that come loaded other than the Google apps are the AGM thermal camera app and an AGM service app that lets you contact AGM directly if you have any problems with the phone. So it's pretty much running stock Android 12, which is really great to see. Games. Now I tested two of the top 10 most graphically demanding games out right now, according to thegamer.com which were Shadow Gun Legends and Asphalt 9 Legends. And in the highest quality graphic settings and 60 frames per second, Shadow Gun Legends ran super smoothly. And I also ran Asphalt 9 Legends at the highest quality graphic settings as well, and it also ran great. Now let's do some benchmarks. First up, the Antutu overall score of 601,594 is better than 99% of all other rugged phones that you can buy right now, and it's actually 74th out of all smartphones in Antutu's database, which is definitely impressive. Next up, the Geekbench 6 scores are 1,110 single core, 2,821 multi-core for the CPU, and 2,511 OpenCL for the GPU. Now for reference, the Doji V Max 
scored 734 on the single core, 2162 on the multi core, and 2663 on the open CL, according to Tech Radar. Next up, we've got PC Mark. Now, the Work 3.0 score here is 14,934, which puts it about upper middle of the best devices. You can see here that the best score is 18,357, so the G2 Guardian score is very good for a rugged phone. Compared to other rugged phones, you can see that the G2 Guardian beats all of these Duji phones by far. And finally, we've got the battery life stress test. So the battery lasted 10 hours and 23 minutes in the PC Mark Work 3.0 battery stress test. But I did have the screen brightness set higher than they recommend for the test. So if you lower the brightness, you will definitely get more out of the battery for sure. Now let's talk about the thermal imaging camera. Warning, if you do get this phone, do not point it directly at the sun because this could seriously damage the sensor. Now remember this because it will come up again later in this video. So the G2 Guardian's thermal image resolution is 256 by 192, which is higher than the Power Armor 18T's resolution of 160 by 120. And the G2 Guardian does support thermal video recording at 25 hertz and you can also take thermal imaging photos as well now most thermal imaging cameras on other rugged phones can only see a short distance for example the cat s62 pro and the power armor 18t can only detect heat signatures up to 20 or 30 meters or 65 to 100 feet away but the g2 guardian has a thermal monocular built inside of it that they say can see human-sized objects up to 500 meters away and larger objects like cars up to 1,000 meters away or more. So let's test it out. Thermal long range test. People and cars at a max distance of 260 meters. For the first test, during the daytime, I set up the phone on a tripod on a bridge in a nearby park and pointed the thermal camera towards the road. These people on the left are about 100 meters or 329 feet away. These people farther away here are about 230 meters or 756 feet away. And the cars going by in the back are about 260 meters or 855 feet away. So far, so good. You can definitely make out the people and the cars very well. Small animals, ducks, 100 meters away. It was also able to pick up these ducks swimming from 100 meters or 330 feet away very nicely. Now this is a great time to point out that as far as I can tell, there is no way to manually zoom in. It automatically zooms in for you at a set distance, which isn't really a problem, I just wanted to point that out. Then as the sun was starting to go down, I set up on top of this hill and filmed down to the basketball court with the street in the background. The people up close are 121 meters or 98 feet away. The people playing basketball are 259 meters or 850 feet away. And the cars in the background are 707 meters or 2320 feet away. And as you can see, you can definitely make them all out nicely. Person and cars max distance 370 to 700 meters. Now the farthest away that I could get from a person was here, and the sun is almost completely down now. The person walking is 370 meters or 1,213 feet away, and AGM says that this will detect a person from 500 meters away, and based on this footage here, I believe that it would. And also the cars in the background are over 700 meters away, 
And based on this, I also believe that it would detect cars up to 1,000 meters away or even farther. Now let's test out the thermal temperature gauge. So for best accuracy, AGM recommends that you put the phone between 2 meters and 8 meters away from the object. So for this test, let's boil some water and test it from different distances. Water boils at 212 degrees Fahrenheit. So let's see what temperature that it reads from 0.3 meters or one foot away, which is definitely much closer than AGM recommends. You can see that it's bouncing between 207 and 212 degrees Fahrenheit. Now let's move it back a bit. Let's do 0.6 meters or two feet away which is still much closer than AGM recommends. And I also want to mention that there are settings in the thermal app that lets you pick things like the material and other particulars about the object and the environment you are testing. And I did set all of these correctly to make sure that we get the most accurate reading for these tests. Now, let's move it back to 2 meters or 6.5 feet, which is at the low end of AGM's recommended distance. You can see it is reading between 170 and 172 degrees Fahrenheit for the boiling water, which is at 212 degrees Fahrenheit. So it is getting less and less accurate the farther that we move back. But Look at how sensitive it is. It can actually tell the temperature difference when we pan down just a tiny amount from the water to the burner itself. It is definitely very good in that aspect. Faulty wires. Now, one thing that you can use thermal cameras for is to help identify wires that are going bad before they start a fire. You can't tell just by looking at the wires with your eyes, but through the thermal camera, faulty wires that are going bad will read as hotter than the other wires. And here is an example of that. Look at the wire on this electric kettle. As the kettle heats up, the wire heats up as well. And according to some electricians I talked to, ideally, this is not what should happen. And the wire is definitely actually hot to the touch as well. But I had absolutely no idea that this wire was getting hot at all until I looked at it with this thermal camera. Ants. Now I was pretty blown away by this. The thermal camera was even able to pick up these tiny ants crawling around on this furniture cushion. Oops, I broke the thermal. Remember earlier when I said you do not want to point this thermal camera straight at the sun? Well, let me show you why that is. I thought that that meant you should only not point it at the sun while you were using the thermal camera. So while I was taking these nice B-roll shots of the G2 Guardian outside, I had the thermal camera pointed right at the sun for probably 90 minutes without really realizing it. And then the next time I went to use the thermal camera, it looked like this. You see these little scratchy things on the sides here? That is because I pointed it at the sun for 90 minutes. Oops. Now the good news here is that these burn artifacts actually don't even show up all the time. You can see this footage was shot after the sun exposure and it looks fine. So it seems to be only in certain low light situations that these patterns show up burned into the thermal footage. So the thermal camera is definitely still usable, but you might want to cover up that thermal lens if you're going to take it outside around the sun. Just a word of caution. Camera tests. Here is some footage shot by the G2 Guardian. Now, unfortunately, it only goes up to 1080p, but one cool thing is that you can turn on torch flash mode to put a ton of light on your video subject. And you can see here what it looks like without the torch flash. 
And here are some still images taken with the G2 Guardian as well. Now, I would have taken more, but I broke the phone. Along comes the durability tests. And the first durability test is to toss it down the stairs. So, let's see how that goes. Ooh, not well at all. The screen is totally shattered and completely unusable. Now, the phone fell probably 2 feet or 0.6 meters to the ground and then tumbled down a few steps. But wait, isn't this phone supposed to be military standard 810H? Which means that it should be able to fall 5 feet onto concrete backed steel? And this is super weird to me because I was able to run over the previous AGM H5 Pro model with my car and it did not break the screen. And the H5 Pro also had a screen protector pre-installed on it that looks just like the one that came pre-installed on the G2 Guardian. Now, the only thing that I can think of that maybe happened here is this. Remember back at the beginning of the video how I said the G2 Guardian came with one screen protector pre-installed and another one in the box? Maybe I was supposed to apply the screen protector that's in the box on top of the pre-installed screen protector? Or more likely, remove the pre-installed screen protector and replace it with the one in the box? I, I really don't know, and apparently I'm not the only one. Shout out to Alfonso for leaving me a comment saying that they have the same question. So I can't say for sure, but you might want to try that second screen protector that came in the box. Now AGM was actually very good about answering some of my other questions about the G2 Guardian, but when it came to this question, I never really got a straight answer. So we don't know. Bottom line. Here's what I liked about this phone. The phone is super fast and apps load instantly. The operating system is clean and bloat free. The thermal app is super easy to use and yet extremely customizable. The thermal camera works great and it seems like you can see objects as far away as AGM says. And the thermal camera works great at day and night time. Now, what I didn't like. I wish that there was a lens cap for the thermal camera lens to keep the sun from destroying it. And I wish that it did not crack the screen when I dropped it down the steps. If this phone really is a military standard 810H, it should not have cracked the screen. So if you do decide to get this phone, just make sure that you do not point it at the sun and make sure that you don't drop it. Other than that, it seems like a great device. And you can check the description below for a link to the G2 Guardian if you want more information or if you'd like to purchase one. So what do you think about the G2 Guardian? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Please share this video if you have found it helpful, and then you can click right here for another great rugged smartphone video, and I will see you there.